Good evening and Merry Christmas. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's Christmas Eve Mass from St. Peter's Catholic Church. Over the past nine months, we have produced weekly Masses for our local faith community who have been unable to attend Mass in person due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been a vital lifeline for our many of our parishioners to celebrate Mass from their home every week. COVID restrictions have not allowed us to minister to many in our community, including our school, those in the hospital, nursing homes, and those in our local prisons. However, many of them are able to gather and watch Sunday Mass on TV. We know you are watching tonight, and we are glad you are here. What we never could have expected was that the worldwide impact our ministry would have. The faithful have joined us in the celebration of Mass from dozens of countries and every state in the U.S. In fact, more people watch Sunday Mass on week, each week on YouTube from California and New York than from Ohio. So that is why we wanted to celebrate Christmas Eve Mass tonight with a special prayer for all of you. Most of all, a heartfelt thank you for your continued stewardship during this difficult year. Your gifts of support sustained our ability to serve you through continuing our ministries. Most of all, a sincere thanks to everyone who have supported the TV Mass Ministry to underwrite the airtime each week on WMFD television. Portions of tonight's Mass were recorded at different times to help maintain safe social distancing for our musicians and singers. Hopefully, one day soon, we will be able to gather again in Jesus' name to celebrate the sacraments in person as a faith community. Our prayer for you this Christmas is one of good health for you and your loved ones. God, God bless, bless and, and Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Good evening and Merry Christmas. This evening we celebrate the vigil of the Nativity of Our Lord. Our Mass this evening is generously underwritten by Dr. and Mrs. John and Mary Riedel.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Special welcome to all of our viewers this night as we anticipate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to uh, welcome um, our ministers who are with us tonight, um, Deacon John Reef, my, our associate pastor, Father Kevin Mobius, Father Matthew Frisbee, the pastor of Resurrection Parish and of St. Mary of the Snows. As we begin then the celebration, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins, trusting in the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the Word made flesh and splendor the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nation shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. 
No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout in the light of your countenance, O oh Lord. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever will I sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. My covenant with him stands firm. Forever will I sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arms, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's des descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
of the earth will be destroyed. The Savior of the world will reign over us. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron, the father of Ram, Ram, the father of Amandab, Amandab became the father of Nashon, Nashon, the father of Solomon, Solomon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse, the father, the father of David, the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam became the father of Abij. Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Sheltiel, Sheltiel, the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, the father of Abed, Abed became the father of Elikayim, Elikayim, the father of Azor, Azor, the father of Zadok, Zadok became the father of Kiam. Achim, the father of Eliud, Eliud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Mathen, Mathen, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. This total number of generations of Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. And from the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Merry Christmas to all of our viewers this evening as we gather for this celebration of the Holy Eucharist. As we've listened to this evening's gospel, you may notice that there are really two parts to the gospel. First, what is known as the genealogy of Jesus from the beginning of Matthew's gospel. Part two is Matthew's account 
of Jesus' birth. The word genealogy comes from the root word genesis, which simply means something or someone's origin. The book of Genesis, for example, contains the origins of Israel as God's chosen people. Matthew begins his gospel with the origins of Jesus because he wants his readers to be clear that Jesus is in continuity with Israel's past and God's promise of salvation. Then the gospel writer goes on to describe how that salvation reaches us, namely in the birth of our Savior. It is not uncommon for parents who are expecting a child, especially a first child, to be excited about selecting a name for their newborn. Prior to advances in prenatal care, it was unheard of to know whether a couple was to have a boy or a girl. So the parents-to-be spent time coming up with names for both a boy and a girl. Ultrasound makes it somewhat easier to choose a name earlier in the life of a child. A name says a lot about a person. It gives a particular identity, association, or character to the person. I find it interesting that in some cases, parents want to name a child after a grandparent or a family name. In the end, the selection is all about identity. This Christmas Eve, we hear from the first chapter of Matthew's Gospel. We listen to the very familiar account of how the birth of Jesus came about. Marriage in Jewish life took place in two stages. A betrothal, or making a public declaration of engagement, which in effect had all the legal qualifications for a marriage, and the time at which the bride was escorted by the family about a year later to marry with her spouse. Joseph, whom Matthew calls a righteous man, an upright man, decides to divorce Mary because she is with child. In effect, Joseph was willing to free Mary of her marriage commitment. Enter the angel of the Lord. The angel tells Joseph not to be afraid to take Mary into his home, for it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. Then Joseph is given a task. You are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. In the Jewish tradition, the naming of a child was understood to be an acknowledgement of parenthood. So not only was Joseph, the righteous man, obeying the divine command made known through the angel, he was also taking upon himself the awesome task of being a father. It was his vocation just as being a mother was Mary's vocation. We know little about Joseph. He was most likely older than Mary. He was a carpenter. He is honored as the patron of all fathers and the patron of a happy death. 
He is the patron of workers. Above all, he was a righteous man. Christmas recalls for us the birth of the Savior. Jesus is our Savior because he was sent to save us from our sins. He is Emmanuel, the one foretold by all the prophets because Christ is truly God with us always. Christmas in a very real way celebrates the covenant of marriage, the sanctity of human life, and the responsibility of parenthood, be it physical or spiritual. It celebrates the fact that being a mother and father is not only wonderful, it is a vocation. Our presence here this evening and on this Christmas feast speaks to our desire to be close to the one who saves us from our sins and to experience the closeness of the Lord who has promised to remain with us. It is something far more important than the hustle and bustle of the last few weeks and the presence and the gatherings, all because of a name and a promise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. There is much joy in this holy place at the birth of the Messiah, yet in many places and in many hearts across the world, there is much need for healing, renewal, and peace. Let us pause now in prayer for all who are in need. That the church everywhere will be strengthened in its ministry to proclaim the good news of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the leaders of nations will govern with justice and work to bring peace and a profound respect for the dignity of all human life to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. The families everywhere will, be strength, will strengthen the bonds that exist and reconcile those who've become estranged. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who this day have no home and no food will be comforted and will have their needs met. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will experience healing and comfort and their caregivers will be strengthened especially the frontline workers 
dealing with the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those who have died and those who grieve their loss will be uplifted by the promise of the fullness of life within the endless Christmas festival of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a savior was great, you sent your son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him, who is God with us and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our glory and the good of all his holy church. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may also be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, 
with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all who holding to the faith, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior into this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the most glorious Ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant to them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Again, on behalf of St. Peter's Parish, our staff, our school, we would like to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. May the peace of Christ be in your homes and in your hearth for you personally and for those that you love. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Him, Almighty God, bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. 
Amen. this evening. If you would like to support our television ministry, please visit our website at www.mansfieldstpeters.org slash TV. Merry Christmas.